Meiosis is the process where organisms produce sex cells, otherwise known as gametes. Sex cells must contain half the number of chromosomes. For example, humans have 46 chromosomes, and the sperm and egg cells have 23 chromosomes each. So when fertilization occurs, they combine to make 46 again. Organisms, as far as we are concerned, and at this level, need to have an even number of chromosomes if they are to sexually reproduce. The genetic makeup of the sex cells is also different because when meiosis occurs, sections of chromosomes are mixed up to create variation. Finally, meiosis always produces four daughter cells, and I will go through the mechanism later in the video. Let's quickly compare mitosis to meiosis first. Mitosis produces two daughter cells, which are genetically identical and have the same number of chromosomes as the mother cell. Meiosis produces four daughter cells, which are genetically different to the mother cell and have half the number of chromosomes. The term daughter and mother cells shouldn't be confused with only being in females. They are just the terms for the starting cell and the new cells formed after each respective process. Now for a more detailed look at meiosis, which again is more than you need to know for your exam, but would be useful if you want to study biology further, for example your A-levels. Meiosis produces four daughter cells, which means the mother cell needs to divide twice, which means we will see all the stages happen twice and be labelled as prophase 1 and prophase 2 and so forth. First, the mother cell with 46 chromosomes, and it is called a diploid cell as it contains paired chromosomes from both its mother and father, double its DNA so that each chromosome is now made up of two sister chromatids, as we saw in mitosis during interphase. The first major difference, however, is that during prophase 1 in meiosis, the chromosomes line up and they pair up with their homologous chromosomes, and that recombination occurs. Remember, the pairs are one from your mother and one from your father, and they generally contain the same genetic information, just alternative versions of those genes known as alleles. Recombination is when the 23 pairs line up and the sister chromatids start to swap sections of their DNA and cross over. This recombination has now introduced genetic variation in all the potential new four sex cells. Metaphase 1, we see the homologous chromosomes line up like mitosis, but during anaphase 1, when they get pulled apart, the whole chromosome with the two sister chromatids is pulled apart from the homologous chromosome. In mitosis, only the sister chromatids were separated and not the whole chromosome. So after cytokinesis 1, we have cells that contain half the number of chromosomes, but they are still made up of two sister chromatids. So they are no longer diploid cells, but haploid cells, as they have half the number of chromosomes. Then we repeat the division process again, but now we label each stage with a 2, so prophase 2, metaphase 2, etc. In anaphase 2, it is important to notice that now the sister chromatids are pulled apart, and then cytokinesis 2 follows. So now we have four cells, which have half the number of chromosomes, and are all made up of one chromatid each. So, when this sex cell combines with another sex cell during fertilization, the new offspring, known as the newly formed zygote, will have 46 chromosomes made up of one chromatid each. In the next lesson, we will look at stem cells.